Okay, welcome again, or welcome for the first time. Um, anyway, this is video 104. What is this on? It falls under the category of specific task on the verbal section. Um, it's specific task reading analysis. So what does that mean? What type of question is this? So sometimes you're asked a very specific thing about the text you just read. Uh, when you're asked that specific thing, it's still a reading question, but you want to really pay attention to that specific thing as you read the paragraph. And your focus is, what do I know about specifically what, what I am being asked? If that doesn't really make sense, it will soon, because I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about. So I'm going to scroll down. And you get about two of these questions to test. So anyway, you may be asked something really specific, like, how does the narrator regard Shannon? Okay, so... How the narrator regards Shannon is likely going to be developed over the course of, of the paragraph that you're given. But as you read from line to line or sentence to sentence within that paragraph, you're always keeping this at the forefront of your mind. OK, what do I know about Shannon? What do I know about how the narrator feels about Shannon? And that's what you're checking in after each sentence. OK, you do want to understand the paragraph, but you want to understand it through this lens. OK, um, so let's do exactly that. The one thing I will say that I should definitely point out is number four, any answer choice you pick for how the narrator regards Shannon it has to be either stated or implied in the text. In other words, if you're going to pick an answer choice, you better be able to point to exactly where you got it from. And you have text that directly supports the entire answer choice, not just part of it, all of it. OK, it's not good for an answer to be partially supported. All of it needs to be supported. So I'll show you this example that I made up and then we'll look at a few more examples. OK, so uh, how does the narrator regard Shannon? Ain't no place a man can hide, Shannon. Keep him from the sun. Ain't no bed will give us rest, man. You keep us on the run. So as I read each of these, I'm thinking, okay, the narrator feels like there's nowhere he or she can hide. Uh, the narrator is feeling weary, right? No place uh, that will give him and Shannon rest. And then finally, the narrator says you, meaning Shannon, you keep us on the run. So essentially the narrator, we can tell the narrator feels agitated by Shannon, right? The narrator feels like uh, they're, they're constantly on the run and there's no place they can go. They're probably running from the law. There's no place they can go or or, or hide or rest. Uh, and it's, it's because of Shannon. So let's look at the answer choice. Shannon is a positive beam of light in the narrator's life. There's nowhere is any of that supported, stated or implied. B, Sh the correct answer. Shannon's a liability who keeps the narrator on the move. You keep us on the run. Uh, so essentially, you keep us on the run, placing blame on Shannon. Shannon's a liability. Shannon is respected by the narrator for his ability to run fast. Doesn't say anything about running fast. No support for respect. Shannon is a narrator's brother. All right, that takes to a whole nother level. All right. Anyway, let's try a couple out. So this one, and we always, always, always read the question first on the verbal section. Based on the text, how do people in the capital of Mexico likely regard Dr. Malsfrido? So essentially, or Malsfrido. So essentially, what do we have to do? We have to see through the lens of the people how they feel about this doctor. Okay, so here we go. Short story called The Vine Leaf. It is a saying in the capital of Mexico. So if it is a saying in the capital of Mexico, this is kind of how he's known by the public or by the people. It is a saying in the capital of Mexico that the doctor carries more family secrets under his hat than any archbishop. The doctor's hat is appropriately enough uncommonly capacious, meaning it has a lot of space under it, rising very high and sinking so low that it seems to be supported by his ears and eyebrows. And it has a furry look, as if it has been brushed the wrong way, which is perhaps what happens if it is ever brushed at all. So what do we have so far? So we have that the doctor wears a big hat and people kind of gossip or share the idea that he's carrying family secrets under his hat. OK, and we also know that the man looks a mess. Right. His hat 
uh, is hardly if ever brushed. And when it is, it's brushed the wrong way. When the doctor takes the hat off, the family secrets do not fly out like a flock of parrots, but remain nicely bottled up beneath a dome of old and highly polished ivory. Okay, so the saying around the Capitol is that this uh, doctor who looks a mess carries, uh, or archbishop, carries family secrets under his hat, but they stay with him. Okay, so let's see what the answer choice says. Few feel concerned that he will divulge their confidences. In other words, it doesn't seem like they're worried about him sharing secrets. So far, I like A a lot. Many have come to tolerate him despite his disheveled appearance. We do have support that he has a disheveled appearance, right? His hat is always kind of uh, never brushed. And when it is brushed, it's brushed the wrong way. But I don't think you're going to find any support anywhere about people feeling like they have to tolerate him. There's, there's just nothing there about how people feel about him as a person, whether they like him or don't like him. Feel free to take a quick look. I'll, you can pause and take a look at that. You're not going to find any support for how people feel about him one way or the other. Uh, C. Most would be unimpressed by him were it not for his professional expertise. You're not going to find anything about professional expertise. Again, I'll go back up. Feel free to pause and look. Not going to find anything there. And also nothing about being unimpressed. Yeah, he looks a mess, but nothing about being unimpressed. Some dislike how freely he discuss, discusses his own family, not a word about his own family. So this one by default has to be A. All right, let's do one more. What does the text indicate about the discovery of the sandal? So we need to know what we can get from the text about the discovery of the sandal. So we're really focusing on this sandal that was discovered. The ice melted on a Norwegian mountain during a particularly warm summer in 2019, revealing a 17,000-year-old sandal uh, to a mountaineer looking for artifacts. The sandal would normally have degraded quickly, but it was instead well-preserved uh, for centuries by the surrounding ice. So, so what we have so far is this man looking for artifacts found the sandal during an ice melt, and it was uh, magically preserved, why, or miraculously preserved. Why? Because it was uh, in ice. If it wasn't in ice, it would have degraded quickly, right? According to an archaeologist and his team, the sandal, like those worn by Imperial Romans, wouldn't have offered any protection from the cold in the mountains. So some kind of insulation, like fabric or animal skin, would have uh, needed to be worn on the feet with the sandal. So this is talking about the sandal. I don't know if it's talking as much about the discovery of the sandal. We really want the discovery of the sandal, so I don't care as much about this. But essentially, it's saying the sandal itself probably had extra fabric on it to make it warm, and uh, because on its own, it wouldn't have been enough to, to trek up cold mountains in. But anyway, all right, discovery of the sandal. The discovery revealed that the Roman Empire had more influence on Norway an archaeologist previously assumed. All right, so nothing about the Roman Empire's level of influence, okay? Again, feel free to look. Nothing to stated or, or implied on that. The sandal would have degraded if it, if it hadn't been removed from the ice. Okay. Uh, the sandal would have degraded if it had not been removed from the ice. Uh, the ice is what preserved it. So actually, I'm, I'm kind of going in the opposite direction on that one. Uh, temperatures contributed to both protecting and revealing the sandal. That we can definitely support, right? The melting revealed it, and the cold ice protected it for 1,700 years. So this is very likely our answer. Let's look at D. Archaeologists would have found the sandal eventually without help from the general public. Okay, there's nothing in there that supports that in any way, shape, or form. One more look at D because the wording's, a, sorry, B because the wording's a little tricky. The sandal would have degraded if it had not been removed from the ice. Uh, the sandal would have degraded if it had not been removed from the ice. Uh, so no, again, it's the ice that preserved it. So uh, it's not like removing it from the ice is what preserved the sandal, the ice not being removed from the ice is what preserved it. So that one's just tricky wording. But anyway, that's C. Good luck on these questions. Again, start always by reading the question first. Identify what the question wants from you. 
read the paragraph, make sure you can follow the progression from sentence to sentence, but really through the lens of what you're being asked. In this case, it was the discovery of the sandal. Okay, good luck.